Can you hear me? I cannot see you. Are we going now? Cool. Hi. My name is Jason. I think we're going now. There's the red light. I know I'm going. Hi. My name's Jason. There it is, son. Uh, Mark Sample of George Mason University, you might know him because he's your damn teacher, has whirlwind, tornado, these sort of things, has informed me that you guys are wondering about the Bomar gene. Well, this is the Bomar gene. It's a work of hypertext, hypermedia, new media, net art, fiction, pseudo-fiction, autobiographical fiction, this sort of thing. He said that you guys had a question about, well, how should I put it, the name of the work. This is a shark. I live in Australia. I'm in Australia right now. And you're in George Mason land, wherever that is. You know my grandfather was a Mason? He was? He was a Mason. Are you guys Masons? I hope not. I have books to show you. Anyway, uh, he was wondering about the name of the Bomar gene. How did that come about? Well, let me explain it to you. Uh, if you look to the work here, you see all these sections. So hopefully you've actually explored the work. So I'm going to sit here. Ah, that's perfect. Hello. I'm on my knees. Um, don't make a joke about that. Don't. Huh. Uh, anyway, this work here, if you look at each of the sections, each of the sections is named after someone. Now, where the heck do all these names come from? Well, I think that one of the grand benefits of hypertext, of hypermedia, of new media work, is that you have all sorts of room to hide things in the work. You have room to sort of put little in-jokes and connections to things that might mean something to you. Well, the name Bomar Jean, actually, well, no, I'll just tell you now. But then you can't just stop the video. You can't be like, oh, now we know. Let's quit. Let's go home. Let's smoke some crack. You don't want to do that. Cracking is bad. I mean, smoking crack. We call it cracking here. Because it has to do with anuses and that kind of stuff. You don't want to hear that. Anyway. Um, the name Bomar Jean is actually my grandmother's maiden name. She grew up in New Mexico. And she has this weird thing to where she thinks she has a psychic bond. I think she has actually kind of a psychic bond. But it was her stories of times when people would die. And when people would die, she would say, oh, she actually heard their voice before they died. Or she would have these weird things where I would be in trouble. And she would call me. She'd be like, is something wrong? And you'd say, yeah, how the heck did you know? She thought it had to do with the genes. There was some sort of connection between blood relatives that caused this. And so hence the Bomar gene. That's where I got that from. And each of these sections is actually named after someone, Yo, something die. in my past. So I'll take you through it and I'll explain it to you. All right, the first one. Actually, I have a little list here. I'm using this. You see it? Hmm? You see it? Watch this. It's gone. And now it's back. And it's gone. And now it's back. That is the sweetest magic trick you will ever see. Anyway, um, each of these sections is named after someone. And I'll give you the reasons why. Just because, hey, I want to and I care about each one of you except for you. You in the third row. You're an ass. All right. Let me tell you a little bit about this. The first one here, Millie Felton. Felt is actually my grandmother, my sorry, my grandfather's last name. And he did a lot of genealogy. Again, a lot of this work has to do with my grandparents and their interest in genealogy and the interest in, in how different people are tied together and how oftentimes they understood genealogy, not by necessarily family relations or where they were from, but by some particular skill. It was always like, oh, yeah, Joe, he had this ability to shoot poo out of his butt for, I mean, too many butt jokes. He had this ability to have a really large forehead or something like that. Anyway, um, so Felton is actually a version of Felt that extends through our family forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Um, the second section here, I think this is it. All right. Um, this is Rosario Bueno. This is actually my girlfriend's um, family. She has a grandmother, and Rosario Bueno 
is a combination of her grandmother's name and another woman's name. They live in the Philippines. Um, and this section, of course, this is a matching game. You have a whole series of things that are happening here. Uh, but again, I wanted to sort of showcase the particular genetic and the anomaly that's happening along with some sort of new media game. So you begin and you can go through and it'll give you these various pictures. Now these pictures are actually pictures, they're slides that I scanned in from my grandfather who labeled them when he died. I found all this stuff of his, as you do when people die. And they were labeled good no, sorry, sorry, sorry. They were labeled bad and poor. And so someone's going to throw them out. These were all these great slides that he made of just growing up in Kansas in a farm. And so that's actually part of the farm. Um, and I just thought it was interesting why he labeled that poor and bad and how each of those slides had another matching picture someplace else in this large collection of pictures that people had when they died. Uh, let's go to another you section. Know, you, die, you, you, oh, well, you don't want to go that the, section. The, that section's the, embarrassing. The, because the, it's crazy. The, 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 the. All right. Um, this section is named Bryant Yeh. Bryant Yeh was a guy that I went to college with. He was a college roommate. He was uh, a good friend for a little while. We used to dump the couch. We had this couch. And we wanted to see how many times we could dump it off the second story balcony. We go back and we pick it back up and then we dump it back over the second story balcony. And it kept on crashing and crashing. And he was an architect and he had an obsession with spirographs. Hence this. And so I thought, well, that's perfect for him. I have no idea where he is. If he's there in the crowd, that would be strange. You should all attack him in mass. Please. Uh, this one. This is Nicole Hawthorne. Hawthorne Fars, again, an old friend of mine, whose dad was a main aide for Senator Boren. You probably don't know. He's not around anymore. He's president of the University of Oklahoma now. But his phone used to be tapped. And he'd always say, yeah, boys, be careful what you say on the phone, because the phone's tapped. I don't know what the hell that relation has to do with this. It really doesn't. Uh, Nicole is actually the first name of a, a girl I dated a long time ago who both her parents died while we were going out. That's bad. I shouldn't act like that. Uh, all right. Let's see. I'll go through the rest of these. Again, this is a short talk just because I want to share it because I'm damn far away. Um, Cordova Jean. That's my sister's last name. You're getting the point here, aren't you? You're like, okay, we get it. Go away. We have important things to do. Oh, these cards. You'll find this interesting. You see these cards here. This one, and this one, and this one, and this one. Those are all from my mom's work. She works at a hospital. She works at a hospital. And she's a speech pathologist. And so she uses these cards to train people somehow how to speak. Which I thought was interesting, this idea of testing. And so actually when she left, I asked her to acquire them for me. So I had boxes and boxes of these really strange, surreal, 1950s style uh, cards. And eventually I'm going to do a work that animates them and does all these crazy things that I will never finish. Just so you know. If you're going to be a new meat artist or a net artist or whatever, as you know with poetry, you should have 90% of your work you should never finish. And only release 10% of what you do. If you're not doing that, you're an a-hole and you should be shot in the face. All right, uh, let's go on, look at these other sections real quickly. So let's see, there's that one, sorry, hard to see. Preston Poe, this is interesting. You'll find this interesting. All right, Preston Poe was a guy whose dad was a professional gambler named Pody Poe. And he'd always had these weird catchphrases and stuff, and eventually the federal government came down on him for tax evasion. Anyway, Pody Poe, Preston Poe, was his son. Now somehow, this kid was in Florida. And he was some guy I went to grade school with. I don't even, didn't even really know him. Just heard about his dad. Somehow recently, like two months ago, he was looking himself on Google. You know how you Google yourself because you're egotistical and arrogant? He Googled himself and found this work and sends me a freaking email and says, why is my name on here? Why are you including me in the work? So I tried to explain to him and, and it got to be awkward and it felt like he was going to try to sue me or something. So I stopped using that email address. Yeah. 
anyway, but it was amazing. Like somehow he had seen this work and caught himself on there. I'm hoping the other people don't do that. Because some of these little stories are not exactly flattering. Now this one here is, I'm not even going to tell you the story of this one. Because this one's a bit risque. And these little, these little songs are crazy. Although if you actually have the patience to cycle through the songs, which I don't know if you do. Let's see. Hold on. Let's see if this one is. Come on, play. Come on, play. Anyway, just cycle through the damn songs yourself. Explore the work. Don't just look at it briefly. You'd be a lame university person if you do that. Those songs are actually, part of them are made by my niece and nephew back when I was at Oklahoma for a Christmas. So you should explore that. Um, Vincent Laird. There's a band called Radial Spangle. Look them up. Radial Spangle, 90s band. They were connected to the Flaming Lips and Mercury Rev and a bunch of bands like that. Anyway, a good friend of mine named Alan. We were best friends for a while. At some point, our friendship died completely. And part of it had to do with a guy named Vincent. So Vincent Laird genes, a combination of those two things. And in a lot of ways, I felt like it was sort of like the death of a friendship. I know, cliche. You're right. You're right. I know, it's very cliche, but who cares, right? We all, that's the trick in poetry and writing, isn't it? Like, you know, go right up to that line of cliche, but don't step over. Stay on the other side. This is my girlfriend, by the way. There she is. There she is, see her? See her? She looks angry, but she's not. She does. Uh, this I love, actually. I, Andrew Thompson's the name of a guy. See Andrew Thompson there? Fred Thompson, another guy I went to grade school. Not, I, I live near. And actually, part of that gene comes from him because he had this uncanny ability to somehow remember numbers of times that he did things. And I don't know, know who Bernard Terrace is. That's actually just made the hell up. All right? All right, this last one here. Most of these things are taken from a train trip I took uh, across the US just to sort of explore That's what those pictures are from. I did that in 2003 when I did sort of a reading tour of my work. Uh, and so most of these come from people I met on the train. That's a wonky interface, isn't it? Go away. Quit. There we go. See, you, you screw up a lot. I screw up a lot. You don't screw up a lot. What you do in the third row. You screw up a lot. All right. Uh, so anyway, these come from the train. So basically, these are based on people I meet. And I was making up stories about these people. In fact, I have a short story that's sort of like a combination of various genres that I wrote about this train trip and the people that are there and making up stories about them just based on observations that probably aren't true. Will it ever get published? No. Because people in print don't like me. They don't like electronic stuff. All right. Anyway, you asked. Mark asked. You guys seem interested. So I wanted to share this with you. Um, Explore the work. There's lots of things hidden in here. In fact, all of my work, I hide things in here. Uh, what you should do, actually, is you should go to, well, this is not going to work. Maybe it will. Here, hold on. Let's see if I can go back. Go back. Come on. <whistles> right. Um, you should go explore all these works. I've got a heaps of stuff. It's a way to sort of keep yourself from going nuts, basically. I think that's some reason why I do it. Um, Explore these works. There are hidden things in there. In fact, there's a couple links in there that if you click them, you get money. I'll send you money. No one's ever clicked it. You'll never find it. But if you do, I'll send you money. All right. Hey, look through this one. This one actually I'll send you a postcard from Australia if you figure out the first one here between treacherous objects. If you can figure out the secret email address. I'll give you a hint. It's secret. All right. Hey, thank you for your interest. Um, I'm hoping to maybe come visit. So I might see you personally. If I do, you owe me money and food. I think that's it. Brilliant. Thanks. Goodbye. Are we done? I think we're done. I think we're done. Oh, look. Oh, it faded away. Sweet. Thanks, Bevan.